Well, going back to the old writing game, eh? Don't remind me. I suppose it'd be quite hard getting back into it after all these years. I know. Next two or three weeks, it's going to be no joke, believe me. I do believe you. I heard that. Aren't you coming in, Ruby? Bugger off! What? So the car's been up on blocks in the garage, has it? What's this then, air ribbon? And what's this cap for? Fancy this party? Oh, Ruby, I'm Oh, get explain. out of my I, uh... sight! Naff off, you cheeky little bugger! Oh. Like father, like son. You oh. get my bleeding nerves, you do. All this clean, Arthur. Pay a cleaning woman, you know, to come in here three times a week. But it's against their union rules to rub hard. Well, Terry will give you a hand. Will he? Oh, hello. Ruby Hubbard, Terry McCann. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. <laughs> you do very nicely, Arthur. What time do you make it? Four o'clock. Oh, well, I'm on Capri time. That makes it an hour in advance, you see. Just cocktail time. Fancy a couple of quick ones. Oh, why not? Come on. Yeah. Do you want to get on with a coffee, Terry? No, 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 all right. Come on, have a drink. Hey, Terry, what's your favourite breakfast? Oh, I don't know. I eat anything. Well, you tell me and we'll get it for you. Is that what you tell your joke? It's clean. Yeah, all right, go on. Well, there was this elf, you see, and it was sitting on a toadstool. Oh, the traffic was murder. Hello, Ruby. What are you doing here? Well, I'm looking after you, Ruby. I thought I'd liaise with your publisher and all that, you know. Well, I hope you enjoy it. Me and Terry's got somewhere to go. Bye-bye. Gratitude. Bloody publishers. I think they own you. I know it's the draft manuscript by the end of the month. Of course, it's a bit swift, isn't it? Well... I did say they could have it at the end of last month, but what with this and that? And now he's sent, he says he's sending a secretary round to help out. <laughs> I've told him. I said, it's not like the old days, you know, one book a month. It's not easy for me anymore, not easy at all. I thought they'd give me a bit of time. You know, make a bit of a fuss of me. Get me a few chat shows. You've done a chat show? One's not enough. I had to get that myself. Rang up three times before they remembered who I was. The blue room at the Regency was just... Sorry? I'm working, Terry. Oh. Was just as Louise had remembered it. She'd spent three happy days there with Silvio the summer before. His wife had been dead for almost two years, during which time she had nursed his two tiny children, Emil and Maria. She had seen him change from the powerful Adonis that every woman desired but only one possessed, to the shy, nervous man whose life seemed to be almost over. I'm having the beef. Oh, Silvio's getting on all right with Louise, isn't he? Oh, that's the calm before the storm. She meets Alex soon. Ooh. Alex is a well-known London criminal. Ah! Oh, my God, 
they've nicked the lot. I'll phone the police. Here, hang on. Phone the press first. Has Arthur come up with anything then? It's only been a couple of days, hasn't it? A bit surprised if he was in with them. They're all chances. Oh, be fair, Ruby. Don't mind working evenings, do you, dear? Oh, no. It's frightfully interesting for me. Wish it was for me. Louise gazed out at a London that she no longer knew. Silvio ran his fingers through his hair and pressed his foot hard down on the accelerator. Their private jet was waiting. He wanted to be out of there. I'm not disturbing your love life, am I, dear? But you will be taking this down in shorthand as well, won't you? Sorry. Thank you. She had dreamed of private jets, a home in the sunshine, and the power of wealth. But as she looked at the harsh landscape, which had once been her home, she realised she had lost more than she had gained. Her tears were not as Silvio thought for that London criminal, Alex McCann, but for what she had lost, hope, innocence and a home. Don't mind me calling him McCann, do you, Terry? No, 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 no. What happens to him? I wish I knew. Don't um, dear. Goes right through me. <sighs> That. <laughs> this book's going to put you right back on top, Ruby. Is it? I think we've done very, very well. The book's done. I got all your money back for you. And I'm sure you're satisfied with Terry's services. Oh, very, yeah. Well, I, I think we should have a, a closer business relationship when you start the next book. I mean, anyone who can get money out of a man like Barney can sort anything out for you. He tried every trick in the book. Said he hadn't got long to live. Art condition. I said, the only condition you got, old son, is... He said what? Ah, don't swallow it, Ruby. You know him, he's an old schmoozer. Nah, he knew he'd lost all right. He's staying with Ronnie. He'll land on his feet, as usual. I said to him, I said, Barney, you are not cut out for big business. You always do everything wrong. Now, me, I mean, I, for instance... Aye, 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 me, 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 that's what we bleed near from you, innit? Eh? Hey? All right, Barney's a bit dodgy, but so are you, sunshine. And he's an old man. So either shut up or get out and walk. Oh. You want to liaise with my publisher? Give him that. Right. And now, Barney, it's up to you. Fine pickle you got yourself into, didn't you? That is true. You've come in. You haven't come to gloat, have you, Ruby? Well, you know me better than that, don't you? Yeah, yeah I suppose so. How have you been? Oh, I'm very well, Barney. I mean, everything's fine with me. You must hate me by now. You've got every reason. It's no use beating about the bush, I suppose. At least I'm man enough to admit that I did flog your house behind your back. Well, you can hardly deny it, could you? Oh, that's, that's right. That is correct. And I don't hate anybody. Have you seen the doctor about this, then? Who told you about that? Arthur Daly. Uh, lemon. I begged him not to. Oh. Bunny your coat up, you'll catch him. What are you going to do about it? Probably put my name down for an old people's home. Oh, stop it. I'll, I'll be all right. I've got a few interesting business ventures, you know. What? Well, business like, you know. How's the book? Best thing I've ever done. It's my story, you know. Yeah, well, some of the stories I came up with weren't all that much bottle, were they? Well, I don't know. I've got 
14 books out of three of your ideas. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Mind you, they've still got to be written. Oh, yeah, I agree. Well, writing Dodge is a tricky one, isn't it? Oh. I, uh, What? I'm, I'm really glad you're a success again. You know, got... Yes, yes, I, I am. You got many friends in Caprivi? Oh, hundreds. Right, you've got the lot then, haven't you? Everything you've ever worked for. We had everything, Barney, and you chucked it away. Oh, yeah. Married to the successful, attractive writer Lorraine Masters. Reflected glory, that's all I ever had, Ruby. No. It's true, gal. I mean, I know I was just an East End lad ready for anything that fell off the back of a barrow, but I did help you a lot in the early days. I never said you didn't. You never said I did either. You were so busy looking after your career, you didn't have time for me. That's why I started messing about. Well, it's all history, isn't it? Anyway, I'm, I really am glad you're a success again, girl. Hope you'll be very happy. I am. I'm, I'm very, very happy. I give you Ruby. Ruby. Yes. Here's to another Lorraine Masters success. Yeah, yeah. Well, when are we publishing, then? Oh, uh, a few months. Mm, my publisher never tells me nothing. No. Terry, come here. I want to talk to you. I understand you uh, sold Ruby's car for her. Yeah, why? Uh, do you want to buy a motor? Uh, no, no. I'm just a poor publisher. Dear Ruby. Dear's a word, isn't it? She's uh, cost you a few extra, Bob. Do you think she knows what she's done? You mean rewritten her first novel? Yeah. No, I don't think she does. So what will you do? Get the advance back off her? Oh no, she keeps the advance. Keeps it? How did you? Oh, that's how? not an original idea, Mr. Scott. What is these days? Books, TV, cinema, it's all the same. The fact that this is the same as her first book makes no difference. It's called Formula Romance. Did Ronnie say where he'd gone? Yes, I did. No, he just said Barney had gone away. I left your letter. Gone away. I just met some dancing girl again. Well, it's back home to Capri for me then. Could be worse, couldn't it, eh? Your taxi, Miss Masters. Oh, call me Ruby, love. I won't bite you. I'm glad I saw him, Terry. I mean, I thought I'd give him hell for a little while and then we'd have a few smashing years in the sunshine. But of course, life's not all violinists and pigeons, is it? <laughs> And it never finishes up like those soppy stories I write. There you go, that's a lot. There you go, Ruby. Thanks. Ruby! I've got your notes. Ronnie said you'd gone away. Yeah, well, I, I, I did sort of. This fellow I know had a greyhound running I down in I don't want to hear it. Oh, you always pack me off home if you get sick of me. Yeah, probably will. Where do you want this furniture, Arthur? Yeah, is that me, George? Uh, yeah, Ruby. Sell it for me, Arthur. I'll do my best. Must be worth all the three grand, Ruby. Three? I'll give oh. you five, you robber. I'll do my best, Barney. Trust me. 